Okay, can you uh, see this uh, slide and can you listen me? Yes. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, we can. Ah, okay, so you should speak a little bit loudly. I mean, not like that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, uh, last time I discussed about this uh, example. Okay, the boundary wall example. So now if you think about it, uh, then can you think about uh, some of the uh, activities which needs to be performed in, in a sequence to, control, uh, to complete this boundary wall example? So this was the uh, plan, uh, this was uh, one uh, section, and this was another section. So these uh, three uh, drawings gives you some information and then this is some uh, one uh, detail okay yeah for example we need to procure materials then excavate lay the bricks pour concrete like that mm, yeah so what will be the first activity? Site investigation uh, and, and probably uh, marking some points uh, using surveying tools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe I can add one slide and then I can take the load. So uh, activities activities for yeah activities okay list of activities okay so first uh, anyway uh, not the first but just uh, okay uh, uh, first activity second or third we can uh, decide uh, later on but let's uh, start from the activities so so what will be the uh, say say again okay Uh, to mark some points on the site uh, using surveying tools. Okay. Yeah, so marking points. Okay, surveying. Okay. Yes, actually there should be some shorter term, but uh, I don't know, I can't recall. Okay, yeah, okay, surveying. So we can say that all, we can say all of these activities are the site survey. Yeah. Site survey. Then, soil excavation. Um, uh, delivery of equipment. Excavation. Mm -hmm. uh, delivery of equipment. Okay. Delivery of equipment, but uh, what is the equipment we need in this case? Excavators, uh, compactor equipment, some loading machines, mm -hmm. people. <laughs> okay. Well, we can also procure the materials. Mm -hmm. Equipment. So uh, you need you need excavator, okay? Excavator. Okay, excavator for. And what else? Uh, Some compacting tools. Uh, compacting, okay, compactor, mm -hmm. compact. compactor, okay, May, uh, yeah, we will be talking about the major equipment, yeah. There's also a lot of hand tools, huh? uh, hand tools. I, uh, well, hand tools, okay, that's okay, but uh, what are the major equipments? Mm -hmm. Concrete mixers. Yeah, concrete mixer, uh, mixer, concrete uh, mixer. 
Okay. Anyway, uh, we can add some more equipment uh, later if we need. Uh, let's talk about some other. Um, okay, so site ex survey, excavation, and then um, uh, material. Okay, material procurement. Okay, in this material procurement, we can even also add some more thing as well. So, yeah, I, I want to populate this list. So, so material procurement and this is the activity, then other, what are the other activities? So, if you, for example, if you look at the sequence of the work, uh, the types of work for which you are estimating, you can uh, list uh, uh, several uh, activities. Okay. So you have the uh, 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 brick work, you have the reinforced concrete work, we have the plain cement concrete work. Okay. You have the reinforcement work, you have the structural steel, uh, you have underground work, we have uh, overground work, clustering, masonry is involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Installation of form works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, form work. Okay. Formworks. So formwork, we have two types of formwork. Formwork for uh, footing and column. Yes. Yeah. Formwork for footing. Formwork for column. For columns. Yeah. Formwork for footing. Form work for columns. Mm -hmm. We also need to add reinforcing uh, before form work. Uh, yeah, we will talk about the sequence later, but let's uh, just try to uh, gather the list of activities. Okay. So reinforcement okay reinforcement we can write so what uh, what uh, what type of re uh, how many types of reinforcement we uh, need for footing for column and stirrups yeah okay yeah but i think we can divide the reinforcement also in this way so reinforcement for uh, footing in footing And reinforcement uh, underground, so uh, underground uh, well, other, uh, other, uh, other than two, uh, uh, there are. Uh, some of you, so they can also, you can also reply only Sultan and Tilijan are replying, but others can also reply, okay, can give some input, okay. Uh, reinforcement underground, then we can say reinforcement, uh, that means footing is of course underground, but reinforcement in column, okay. Underground and reinforcement reinforcement in column overground mm -hmm. so why do we have to consider underground and overground
separately. Because they're done in sequence, it will be easier. The thing is, of to... course, the sequence, but of course, why not? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, we can even uh, you can we can even do the reinforcement in one activity as well. So starting from the underground and up to the top of the uh, column, but uh, we may even uh, break it uh, uh, into two parts as well. So what can be the reason? I mean, yeah. Any answer? Okay, so if you can find this answer, then let me know it. So let's go to some other activities now. Yes, some other activities. Aslan Beck. Alim Jan. Hmm? Concrete works. Yeah, concrete. What is the concrete work? Concrete. Uh, what is concrete work? Concrete pouring. Okay. Okay. Yes. So first, which type of concrete will be poured? M twenty five. Uh no, there oh, is. Oh, you mean uh, poured on cement concrete? Yeah, no, no, uh, not Portland cement concrete. It is the plain cement concrete. Okay. Uh, yeah. It is a Portland cement concrete, uh, but uh, this is the plain cement concrete, concrete without any green source. PCC pouring, okay. Uh, yes, next. Footing. Concrete pouring. Mm -hmm. okay. Column concrete pouring. Mm -hmm. uh, what what else? Still for barbed wires. Mm, brickwork. Yes, brickwork. Uh, uh, brickwork and before what? What someone said? Steel for? What? Steel for yes, barbed structures. wire. Yeah, yeah, for the barbed wire. So uh, brickwork. So brickwork can be also uh, underground and brickwork uh, overground. Mm -hmm. And structural steel angles, structural, structural steel angles. And then with structural steel, you have the barbed wires, barbed wires. Mm -hmm. And what? Plaster. Yeah, plaster. Okay. I mean, I have a space here, so maybe I can put it here. Yeah, plaster. Plaster can be also uh, two types. Plaster outside, okay. Over uh, overground. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to squeeze some of the things here. I want to make everything in the one in one slide. 
okay over ground over ground and if you remember if you see the description of this uh, uh, case study there is some plaster which is underground as 100 millimeter plaster underground so plaster outside uh, underground local plaster underground yeah underground but both sides is same underground 100 millimeter underground so plaster overground plaster uh, plaster uh, you can say that the plaster inside uh, overground okay overground okay then plaster inside inside underground okay maybe like this so plaster outside overground underground sorry uh, I think it should be underground uh, or overground mm, oh yes sorry uh, Okay, let me see. I'm, I have mixed a plaster outside overground, plastic uh, uh, plaster inside underground. Yeah, underground and plastic inside overground, plastic outside overground. Right. Okay, and uh, yes, what else? Vacuum. Hmm. Soil backfilling. Yeah, backfilling. Yeah, backfilling uh, will come somewhat, uh, but I think we have to decide uh, what, when we, we have to do the backfilling. And one thing which we uh, missed uh, in the last time was that uh, we can uh, also have the uh, plaster work on the top of the uh, uh, walls. Okay. Plaster work on the top of the wall. So, for example, here on this surface, uh, this surface. This was not mentioned in the uh, in before, but if it it was not mentioned before, and then the later on the client would want to have the plaster on the top surface of the wall, then uh, that will be considered as an additional art item. Okay. Yeah, because it is, uh, it may be at that time the client would have missed it, but that the plaster on the uh, plaster on top of the wall, okay, plaster on top of the wall. So you have the reinforcement work, uh, concrete pouring we have already done. Yeah, uh, reinforced concrete pouring, yeah, we did not do it yet. Uh, reinforced concrete in footing, uh, reinforced concrete in Uh, in which in RCC concrete in yes in columns hmm. so anything else which is needed in this why are we considering concrete again 
I mean, shouldn't it all already be included in column concrete pouring, footing concrete pouring? Yeah, I missed that. So uh, yeah, footing concrete pouring, all oh, okay. okay. So that means we have doubled it. Okay, yeah, I did miss it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and what else? So how many activities we have actually approximately? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, about nineteen activities. So is it enough or anything else you need to consider? Maybe site cleaning after the works. Yeah, site clearance. Site clearance even is even needed uh, before the work as well. Uh, okay. Hmm. So talking about the. Uh, Talking about the uh, talking about the material procurement. So what are the materials which we need? Concrete. Hmm. Uh, concrete. Uh, so when we say as the concrete, it means that we are uh, ordering the concrete, uh, ready mixed concrete. Okay. But if you are, if we are uh, using the uh, concrete mixer, that means we are uh, needing, we are going to mix the concrete at the site. So this thing uh, we need to uh, decide. So for this project, uh, what do you think? We, will we need a concrete mixer at the site or a ready mixed concrete by the, between which the concrete has to be transported in the ready mixed concrete? Will the concrete mixer be enough or we need the concrete uh, uh, trucks. So this thing we need to decide. So since we are using a concrete mixer, which it means that we are mixing the concrete at the site. Uh, as this seems to be not a very uh, large uh, scale uh, project. Uh, it is appropriate to have the concrete mixer uh, at the site and then uh, transport the concrete within the site. Okay, so for example, since this is a uh, about uh, a 20 meter distance from one end to the other end, which is not too much, and the concrete is also you know, maybe needed is not too much as well. So it's better to have a concrete mixer because the concrete mixing trucks, they transport, they transport a more a huge amount of concrete. So that amount of concrete may not be needed. And uh, for example, and then we also don't need to pour too much concrete at the same time. So it is better to have a concrete mixer of appropriate quantity in which uh, we can pour the concrete uh, one by one into these different uh, columns and footings in small uh, quantities. Okay. So by this, we can decide that we will be, uh, we will be having the uh, cast in place uh, concrete or like uh, way, cast in place or like a site uh, made concrete. Okay. So we need then cement, and 
aggregate you can just uh, agree aggregate and of course water whatever and it, it mixtures which are needed so concrete uh, making uh, materials we need okay what else we need over here masonry bricks yeah uh, bricks yeah so bricks is a material so the bricks can be clay bricks or it can be other uh, 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 concrete blocks as well but suppose we are using the concrete uh, clay bricks over here and then um, mortar uh, yeah mortar is uh, well if we have cement and sand then that means mortar so uh, mor uh, mortar we can we, we can have the concrete mixers we can have even the uh, mortar mixers but suppose that uh, we don't need any I think it will be uh, not very economical to have separate mixers for the concrete and the uh, mortar mixers. So we can choose, a, a, you, a, you can consider to choose an appropriate size which is suitable for both the concrete mixer and the uh, mortar mixer as well. Or otherwise, in, for such type of work, even manual uh, mixing of the uh, mortar is also sometimes done on small projects okay so for mortar we need only see cement sand and water so of course uh, yeah just add water also okay uh, then structural steel angles okay structural structural general steel angles yeah, structural steel angles. Hmm. Hmm. Then which other material do you need? Reinforcing bars. Yeah, reinforcement bars. Reinforcement bars. So we are using like uh, three kinds of bars, 12 meter, uh, 12 millimeter, uh, 8 millimeter, and 16 millimeter. Okay, reinforce cement, reinforce cement bars. Okay. And Uh, what other material do we need? Plaster. Uh, plaster? Uh, plaster is the mortar, actually. Barbed uh, wire. Uh, wires, yeah. Barbed wires. Okay, barbed wires. Okay, and uh, and then other things are the small tools and uh, equipment. Okay, so how about the uh, personnel? When when I talk about the personnel over here, uh, let's uh, not consider the uh, management personnel over here or supervisor. Uh, so the, uh, the personnel which are like a labor, okay? Labor and direct supervi supervisory staff. Okay, so what type of personnel we need? So do you uh, cons uh, consider this project to be done by a single contracting party or a multiple of parties? Different crews we are needed. Maybe we need different crews. Maybe we can just have a group of six to 10 people. Um, it's a small project and usually uh, all these works are similar and maybe they can be done by the same people from the beginning to the end. 
mm -hmm. like uh, pouring concrete, uh, preparing concrete mixture, uh, brick laying, and and uh, and finishing using plasters. Um, probably they can all be done uh, by the same crew. Mm. But to so, be more specific, uh, we can have uh, brick layers, mm -hmm. uh, concrete man. Um, uh, we have, um, yes, I think that dudes that work with uh, rebar. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, rebar benders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rebar benders. Yeah, okay. Steel fixers. <laughs> yeah, steel fixers. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I think your answers are uh, more or less considering the uh, situation on the project. So you are considering this uh, uh, as a small uh, project, uh, which indeed is not uh, which which indeed is correct to say that it is a small project. Uh, so for a small project, uh, maybe just one party can do every other, uh, every task in this project. Uh, yeah, but if the project was bigger, then they, then you may then we may have several crews working over here. So some of the crews will be only doing the excavation. The uh, some other crews will be only uh, bending the bar, bending and cutting the bars, and then fixing them. So this that will be the reinforcement crew. Another crew will be the one that will come and do the concrete pouring, and then another crew will come and do the masonry work, which will include the uh, brick work and then uh, plastering work as well. So, and then at the same time, uh, when they will be doing the concrete pouring. Uh, they will be also fixing the uh, st uh, st uh, fixing the steel uh, structural steel angles on the top, and then and then in the end when everything has been set up, then they will fix the uh, barbed uh, wires on the top. <clears throat> so. Uh, there can be then several uh, ways for doing even this uh, a small uh, project as well. So personnel, we can also say that, okay, let's talk about them. Uh, we need the ex uh, uh, laborers, okay? We need the laborers, okay? So laborers we need for small uh, kind of work, so for transporting the material uh, within the site. So for example, if we place the brick, uh, if we place the bricks, uh, for example, needed for the project. So what will be the best place to place the brick for this project? Within the construction site? Yeah, in this case, uh, suppose that uh, we have, uh, uh, this is the plan for the construction. Suppose that the area within the site is uh, just empty. So supposing that. So the best place to place the bricks over here will be in the uh, center, right? Or will there be any other consideration? So for example, if we place the bricks in the center, then that means uh, for each area, for each um, site, we will need to transport the minimum distance. So for placing the bricks, okay? So this will be the, uh, so the, so the bricks will be placed over here. So the laborers will manually transport the uh, bricks from the center to the different areas where the bricks will be needed. So they may transport the bricks on the wheelbarrows or maybe even they can uh, manually carry the bricks on uh, with hands or some other things, okay? So depending on the site uh, conditions, uh, we may choose the uh, area for the work wherever it is needed. Okay, so, and one more thing which is, <clears throat> which you need, need to consider is, uh, for example, over here, 
you see that uh, the height of the wall is uh, how much? Height of the wall is 1.8 meter above the uh, ground level. Okay, 1.8 meter above the ground level. Right, and suppose that uh, if we also include the uh, sorry, yeah, 1.8 meter above the ground level. Ground level is zero level, and below the ground level there is a an excavation of 875 plus 275, more than one meter excavation as well. So from the bottom up to the top, it's about 1.8, about uh, three meter. There is a three meter distance. If you see that from bottom to the top, there is about three meter distance and then further 0.4 meter for the, uh, uh, for the steel angle. So that means about, we are covering an area, uh, covering a height of about 3.4 meter. So it means that at some point in the project, we will also need some uh, temporary work areas above the ground level for the people to work. So we must, we must consider also those the requirements so we can call as the uh, we can call them as the uh, a scaffolding okay so scaffolding is also needed okay scaffolding is the uh, so some kind of scaffolding set that means which can provide some uh, working platform uh, to the people working on the site to the people working on the site, scaffolding uh, will be also uh, needed, okay? So personnel, we need the laborer and then uh, mason and what else we need? Who, uh, 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 bar, uh, bar benders, okay? So bar benders <coughs> and then Bar benders. We need uh, carpenters. So carpenters normally uh, perform if depend depending on the uh, type of the form work. Uh, form work normally nowadays is being used as like a, a steel form work. So the job of the carpenters is to fix the uh, form work, okay, or other uh, work related with the cutting and then. Uh, machines, Car uh, laborer, mason, bar benders, carpenters. Mm. What else? Uh, carpenters and what else? Mm. Concrete, concrete porters, concrete, uh, uh, concrete uh, mm, uh, mixer operators, correct? Concrete mixer operators. <clears throat> okay, so concrete mixer operator is the one who is responsible for uh, <clears throat> mixing all these cements and aggregate and to convert it into. Uh, concrete and then the laborers will supply from the concrete mixer to the uh, mason or whatever who is working uh, who will pour the uh, concrete okay so scaffolding over here scaffolding for the temporary uh, working space above the ground level when the height is something like more than uh, I think normally some of the specifications say that when the working height is sometimes more than 1.5 meter or similar like these figures, we need to provide a scaffolding, okay? For the safety of the people and secure uh, work areas. So scaffolding will be also needed over here. Hmm. So uh, with these uh, uh, brainstorming session of the activities, then you can uh, uh, think about the sequence of the work. So maybe uh, the next time I give you a task, 
to create a kind of like a, uh, a network diagram considering all these factors and try to come up with uh, a kind of a schedule uh, schedule can you uh, maybe you can present your uh, 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 schedule uh, on, on, without any dates uh, this will just show the uh, activity sequencing um, uh, for this project and then i think i would like to see it and then maybe some of you can uh, present it in the class okay Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. So considering these uh, uh, these area activities, you may think about some other thing as well. Uh, then you can come up with those situations. Okay. One thing is that over over here is that. So I think the main thing which you can see from this area is this wall actually. So the wall consists of columns and uh, bricks. Okay. So what will you do? You, will, you, uh, uh, will you construct the columns first or the brick walls first? Mm -hmm. So this is the brick, uh, brick wall cross section. This will be the column cross section. So, I think most likely what you will do is that after the excavation, you will first of all pour the uh, plain cement concrete. Okay, this layer will be poured. Okay, and uh, for example, will you pour the whole length first? And then you will do the next activity? Or you will pour maybe just this one wall first and then Another activity will start on that wall, and then you will start pouring the next wall. Okay. So how you are going to plan this work? And if over here you can see that for uh, for the poured concrete, uh, you can uh, place the brick walls. Okay, in the form of these uh, steps. And similarly, on the poured uh, concrete, plain cement concrete, okay, PCC, uh, you can pour the concrete footing as well. So it means that uh, at some points, uh, like this over here, yeah, at uh, uh, like this. So these are the columns and then the footings. And in these column footings, there's this brickwork. So this is the brickwork as well. So that means the brickwork cannot be like continuously will be covering the plain cement concrete. So there will be some areas where the, there will be the brickwork in some areas there will be the concrete columns as well. So this is also a decision uh, that you have to take. And also in, in this case, you can see that, for example, if you reach up to the ground level or a little bit above the ground level, and then everything under the ground which has been completed, then you may consider that uh, you can backfill that area. So, because, so that if you backfill that area, so that you have uh, appropriate, uh, you will have uh, uh, enough space and easy space to work on the ground as well. So that means backfilling may not need to be wet for so long time over here. And then you can do the uh, uh, brickwork for that area. And But one thing which you need to consider is that the plastering was uh, 100 millimeter below ground level. So it means that if you will backfill over here, then there will be no area for the plastering as well. So in that case, you can uh, maybe you can leave the, some of the area near this uh, over here, over this wall as uh, vacant so that uh, there is no backfilling near that area and then you can do the uh, plastering work in that 100 millimeter area or you can just do this uh, backfill for temporarily and then when you want to do the plastering you can only remove that uh, smaller area over here for providing the uh, plastering work over here okay 
So, so will you do the uh, column uh, construction of the column first or the brickwork first? So that is your decision to make. So in the next class, I think maybe uh, try to present your ideas in the form of some small uh, network diagram, and then we will see how your planning process works. Okay. Okay, so uh, any questions about this?